Hello, this unrelated window tinting video is going over my evening of Yuba City's evacuation advisory, which I thought was mandatory at the time I found out everyone was leaving. I'm putting this video up one year to the day all of this took place. I have recorded footage of my surveillance camera. I'll show you the traffic that was going on the night we left. After coming home from an errand, it was not till close to 6 p.m. that I even found out people were even evacuating. When Liz told me, I looked at the monitor and it did seem strange to see so much traffic on a Sunday night. So now that we decided to leave, I got a hold of my mother and we packed the three kids, one hamster and a dog and headed to Davis, which usually takes an hour, took us more like two hours. This is the radio news report we listened to in the car just after we got on the road. Okay, the latest information that I have received is that uh, when this situation started to develop, and the need to evacuate people became apparent. The Department of Water Resources uh, began to take uh, measures to try to prevent the catastrophic failure of the what is being termed either the, uh, the auxiliary or emergency spillway. I want to make it clear that the actual dam is not in jeopardy. Those measures included was increasing the uh, flow down the spillway that was damaged a couple of days ago to 100,000 cs uh, cubic feet per, uh, per second in an effort to lower the lake level uh, below the uh, threshold of the uh, auxiliary emergency spillway uh, that would prevent the erosion that was occurring from continuing i've been informed that that was successful and that no more water is going over the auxiliary emergency spillway at this time. That's a very positive thing uh, because it brings some stability to this situation. Uh, going forward, uh, the plan, as I understand it, will be to use helicopters to uh, lift uh, uh, thousand pound bags of rocks uh, into and, and put them into the uh, crevice that was created by the erosion, which is, um, I'm informed, a, uh, a technique that is used to repair broken levees. Okay, so now we got our things together in just under an hour, but we really couldn't come up with a lot of things to bring but just some clothes. We put Brittany's car in the garage and took off down railroad to Bogue and then got right onto the highway and luckily didn't need to stop for gas. So in just a second, this is us going down Bogue Road to get on the highway. And this kind of sums up my overall harmless adventure that night. But I do have a news clip to show here in a minute that explains the whole thing in better perspective that cleared things up a lot for me. Now I know this event has affected people way, way, way more negatively for them. But this is just something I wanted to share. So thanks for watching. Let's try and gain a little perspective on this. First of all, take a look at the map. We all know where Sacramento is. You'll see that obviously on here. The town of Oroville is about 70 miles north of Sacramento. It'll take you about an hour to drive up there with no traffic. Go upstream from there, and that's where you find the Oroville Dam, behind which is Oroville Reservoir. This is the tallest dam in the United States. This is the second largest reservoir in the state of California. The dam is fine. This spillway right here is the way they want to release water from the dam before the level of the reservoir gets too high. That's the one that last week became compromised. But they were still able to release water down this, recognizing full well that they'd virtually be destroying that spillway, which is still fine. You can destroy a spillway, the same amount of water still going Going down it. You're not increasing the flood risk downstream. But once they started to turn off that spillway to check it for repairs, the lake started to rise, which meant it started to get close to the level of the emergency spillway. That's this concrete berm that you can see over here to the side. That is lower than the actual dam itself. Here's the actual dam. This is the emergency spillway here. Let the water pour over this rather than pouring over the dam itself because you'll do far less damage that way. What happened all yesterday, all this dirt down here and likely the dirt down here at the base of this spillway started to erode far more quickly than they wanted it to or anticipated it to. If you erode the dirt down here, you compromise the structure of this berm, the emergency spillway. If that had collapsed, you would have had a large surge of water pouring out of 
the reservoir until the reservoir reached a level where it was low enough to get below that. Now, where would that water have gone? Well, it would have flown down, it would have flowed down that hill. You can see they were removing the trees from that hill so that you'd have less debris. Then it would flow into the Feather River and work its way down to the town of Oroville. Can you see now why Oroville is the town that was under the mandatory evacuations? If we follow the Feather River, River further than that, now we start to get out towards Biggs. Can you see why Biggs was under the mandatory evacuation? And then we get down towards Yuba City. Yuba City, you, you're optional on the evacuations, but you are clearly in the pathway of the Feather River, but far enough downstream that you were not under the mandatory evacuations. So there's your overall perspective on that.